Okay, let's take a look at group policies. Now, in this video, we're just going to start with an overview of the group policy management console, and we'll dive into it a little bit more in uh, later videos. So from Server Manager, we're going to go to Tools, and we're going to find Group Policy Management. And this will open up our Group Policy Management console. All right, the pane is divided into two separate pieces. So over here we've got our navigation, and then here is where we have all of our detail information. Now, you'll have your forest listed here, and then underneath your forest you'll have domains, sites, group policy modeling, and results. Let's go ahead and expand domains and our domain. And here you're going to have a, about, what, six different things? So this right here is a group policy link. Now, group policies don't live here under the domain or the organizational units. They live here under group policy objects. So you'll see we have two policies here, the default domain controllers policy and the default domain policy. The default domain policy is linked right here to Dalton.local. So if we click on Dalton.local, this will give us the status, linked group policy objects, so which policies are linked here, by the way. You can have more than one policy linked to any particular location, and you can have a policy linked to more than one organizational unit. We have group policy inheritance and group policy delegation, and we'll look at that more in some subsequent videos. So the main things we want to see here is um, our linked group policy objects. That's going to tell us what's applied where, we, and that's what we see right here. See our link order, our default domain policy, whether it's enforced, whether the link is enabled. We'll talk about these things more, the order, the enforcement, the enabling, the GPO status being enabled when we're talking about uh, group policy inheritance and group policy uh, processing. And so this tells us that this is linked to this location. If you right click on it, it gives you some options to edit, set the enforcement, delete it. If you delete the group policy, by the way, it does not delete the policy. From here, it deletes the link. All right, and then we also see that link here. Now, you'll also see every organizational unit here, whether they have group policies linked to them or not. So the West Wing guests and staff, we don't see anything linked to them. Under domain controllers, we do see a policy linked here. This is our default domain controllers policy, which is linked to the domain controllers OU. All right, so here's where our policies live. Here where there is where they're linked. Now, a group policy can be linked to a domain, an organizational unit, or a site. And that's what this is for down here. If we're running multiple sites, which we'll talk about later in the quarter, if we're running multiple sites, then we can see multiple different sites here. Now, one of the things I mentioned is that you can have a single group policy linked to multiple locations, you can also have, uh, or multiple OUs, you can also have multiple group policies linked to any single location or OU. Now, that gives you a ton of flexibility, and it leads to a couple of debates. So one of them is, is it better to have all of your settings in one group policy for each OU, or are you better off having multiple group policies, each one with only two or three settings that are all related to each other? Uh, only two or three settings linked and have multiple policies linked to the OUs that are appropriate. Honestly, you're going to see people on both sides of that argument. Me personally, I tend to lean towards, let me make each, or, uh, each policy only address one thing. And then let me have multiple policies linked to OUs as needed. Now, the reasons for that. Here in my group policy objects. Yes, I know. Go away. Here in my group policy objects, I can adjust the scope. I can look at details of my group policies, including whether it is enabled or not. I can look at the settings for it. We're going to look at that later. 
Um, I can look at the delegation, the status of it, and I can adjust all of these as needed. And then I can link or unlink group policies as needed. Now, if I've got a bunch of different small group policies, so let's say I have a policy for passwords and a policy for printers and a policy for remote access or for uh, removable device access and a policy for system restrictions. If I've got all of these separated out, then if I'm troubleshooting, I can disable a single policy without disabling all of my settings. So that's why I tend to uh, lean towards doing the um, multiple policies. It makes it easier for me to troubleshoot. But it does lead to some potential mass confusion. Um, Either way leads to potential mass confusion because we're not sure the, yet what's applied to what. So if I've got all of these settings and I'm trying to troubleshoot them and I think there's a group policy setting and I've got six group policies applied to this OU and then it's inheriting from group policies applied to other OUs which are inheriting from group policies applied to the domain and we're going to talk about all of this next week when we talk about group policy inheritance. Um, it becomes a little difficult to find out, okay, what policy setting do I need to change? And that's what these last two things down here are for. So group policy modeling lets us create a modeling wizard. Right click group policy modeling wizard. And we'll look at this a little more next week as well. But what it does is it says, all right, hypothetically speaking, let's say somebody logged into a specific domain controller uh, within a specific OU, their computer is in a specific OU, or a specific user. Um, they logged into a specific container, or a, uh, sorry, a specific computer, or a specific container, a uh, computer in a specific container. Um, if this happened, what would their group policy results be? What would they get? So this is kind of a hypothetical. Let's say this person logged into this computer, what uh, policies would be applied to them. And that's really good for when you're setting up group policies. It lets you check and see, is this working the way I want? The group policy results is similar, except that now it's not a hypothetical. So I want to display the compute settings for this computer for a specific user. Um, and this is a, this is what is actually applied. And we'll look at this more a little bit later on. Let me go ahead and add, add, close. And this shows us, and like I said, we'll look at this more in a subsequent video. This shows me what policies are actually applied to this user, applied to, or logged onto this computer. Um, so this is a, and then we keep track of these so we can monitor them later on. When we're done with it, we can right click and delete or rerun the query if we've made a few changes. Let's see what it looks like now. So these two tools down here, group policy modeling and group policy results, are awesome for troubleshooting and then running scenarios on group policy application. All right, that's your quick overview to your to the group policy console, um, group policy management console. Now, in the next couple of videos, we're going to uh, show you how to um, create and link a group policy object, and then we're going to walk you through where to find some settings in group policy. So that's coming up in our next couple of videos.